generative ai it is the most popular and impactful technology of this era but it also has a lot of components android so in this series we are going to decode all the components but before starting into generative ai we have a term that's called as ai what is ai actually if you know what is ai you can easily clear out what generative ai is if i talk about ai ai is all about the algorithm that can make decisions so they are decision making algorithms and whenever coming about decision making algorithms they are the algorithm that can tell you what should be the next step the algorithm netflix algorithm can tell you what's the next movie you are going to watch what's the next you are product you are going to purchase from amazon what is going to be the next movie you are going to watch next reel you are going to see all these things are the algorithm that can predict your next step they'll help you in decision making for example netflix but if i talk about generative ai generative ai is a bit different it will help you do creative things by your own creative things like chat gpt that can generate new stories netflix on the other hand can recommend movies it cannot generate a new script it cannot generate a new picture new image new video or new movie here comes generative ai which can do the creative task for you as well and chat gpt is the perfect example for that we also have agentic ai that comes into picture we'll talk about that in some other lecture so to see both of them side by side ai is all about decision making algorithms but on the other side generative ai is all about generating something new so ai algorithm can predict generative ai algorithms can generate not only that these are the examples of it but ai algorithms also have some more differences from generative ai in ai algorithms we also have algorithm that can generate something new but they are very specific in nature like in ai we can have algorithm that can gen just generate new faces but the algorithm that can generate face cannot generate a new scenery cannot generate a car or cannot generate a cat and a dog sitting on the moon probably enjoying wine but on the other side generative ai has the algorithms that are general purpose in nature and that means an algorithm that can generate one thing one image can generate another thing that's totally different scenario as well and talking about that ai algorithm because they are generic not very generic in nature they are very specific they require less data but generative ai algorithm on the other hand will require a lot more data okay same goes for ai it will use less computation but talking about generative ai it needs a lot more computation so this is the basic difference between ai and generative ai now let's talk about where exactly generative ai lies in the whole map of ai so this is the chart that you might have seen somewhere for sure in this chart you can see ai inside ai we have a subset ml inside ml we have a subset deep learning inside deep learning we have a subset generative ai so generative ai which is the whole boom nowadays is just a subset of ai in ai we have a lot of other algorithms as well but nowadays gen ai is an ocean on its own so now let's see what exactly things do we have in generative ai so in generative ai we have algorithms can that can generate language that will take language as an input generate language as an output we call them llms as well we will talk about that later chat gpt is an example for that but we also have algorithm that can generate codes we also have algorithms that can generate new files but that all these things are working on text somehow because inside files we have text codes are also text language are also text so all these things comes under one single category that is textual in nature so we call them language models and because these language models are generic in nature they are general purpose in nature we call them large language models llms so they are the model that works on text either text in base of language in base of codes in base of files because files also have text in it on the flip side we also have models that can generate something new something new like images something new like videos and something like 3d models all these things comes under vision task they are providing vision capabilities to the computers and creative work as well so that they can generate something new all these three categories comes under vision models and we call them vision models as well now these are the main two components 
of generative AI, but we also have models that can generate new audio, generate all the other type of components as well. So this is basically the whole map of generative AI. These are the different kind of things a generative AI algorithms can generate. Now here comes a very important concept that's called as modality. What is modality of a model? Modality basic means what are the different kind of things a generative AI model can generate. Okay, for example, we have a single model models. Yes, we have single model models. In single model models, they are the model that can generate just one thing at a time. Okay, that will take text as an input and text as an output. For example, GPT earlier version, GPT 3, 3.5. They can generate just one thing and taking one thing as an output. Text to text basically, okay. Then we have multi-model modality, which basically has one to many relation. A text-based model that can generate text and code, but it can also generate an image. For example, GPT again, the recent models of that. On the other side, we also have multi-model or basically omni-models, okay. You might have heard the term 4O in GPT and that 4O is basically stands for omni, okay. So this has the model that can take any input, any type of data as an input, any type of data as an output. This is multi-model modality, right? So this is single model modality, which will go for one to one relation. A language model can split language, but on the other side, it can also split text. And on the other side, languages uh, means all the other side files as well, because files are also made up of text, okay? And these are the examples of single modality. On the other side, we have double modality or multi-model modality where I have multiple options to take multi-inputs, multi-outputs. But the omni models is, is the new era that we are uh, going in nowadays where it can take any type of input as a uh, model as an input, any type of model as an output. I'm not including files for now because files are also made up of text. So eventually through some data loaders, we can load the text of files as text as well and eventually work on it. So this is, these are some of the recent models, including GPT-5 as well, that works on Omni models, okay? So this is the concept of modality. So there are a couple of models in generative AI that are single models, that are multi-models, that are Omni models. There are a lot of other terminologies as well that we are going to discuss as we go ahead in the, in the whole series. Now, so this is the whole sequence outlook. So they are different models. In a single model, it's a one-to-one -one relation. In a multi-model, we have N to M relation and in multi-model, omni-model, we have N to N relation. All these type of inputs can be gone as an input and all the output, all the kind of outputs it can generate. Okay, so this is the modality of the models. I hope you are clear with it. Now, the thing is, these are all the components of generative AI. Out of all of them, they this is what we talk about. And one of the part that you can see is LLMs language models okay and this whole thing is also part of ai so if you look at the broader perspective llms are a very small portion of the whole ai era but still they are so effective so great at a lot of things that we are talking about we are thinking of like gen ai or basically llms are the future of ai but llm just a part of it it has a lot of application to revolutionize almost all the industry that we can talk about. This is why the application of it is great. But basically, if you look closely, it's just a simple component, just a very small component of AI models that we call it as language. And from language, I mean to say language, text and documents and files as well, codes as well, because all of things can be treated in language that we call it as LLMs. Okay. And this time, uh, we are going to mainly discuss about images point of view. Okay, so these are the images that I have. So what I'll do, I'll take these images, I'll give it to a generative AI model. For now, just think of it as a black box that learn from data and give you something related to that data as an output. So these are the images that I'm taking as an output. All of them are female models given to the model, means they are different models, this is a different model. And then the model will generate a new image that is basically generated from the summary of all these images, okay? And you can also run this exact code in the GitHub link that is given on, given as well. And the same link will also be given in the description for sure. Uh, so, and this is the image that is generated, is, actual, is actually generated by an AI. That is, and I'm using an architecture that's called as generative adversarial network. 
So this is the basic detail about generative AI. Now let's see how a generative AI can generate something new. So for that purpose, we have different kind of algorithms, single models, multi-model and omni-model modality. And apart from that, there are some other Gen AI architectures as well that we are going to discuss in detail. But for this lecture, let's see in a very basic example how an image generator works. So imagine there are some images of a couple of models that I have taken. I'll give it to an AI model. Think of it as a black box that will take the data, summarize the data and generate something new that is relatable to the existing data on which the model is trained. So once these images are given to a model, the model will learn from it and generate a new image. And this is the actual image that is generated by a neural network architecture that is called as generative adversarial network. And this is going to be the next video as well. So stay tuned for that. And this is the model you can execute by yourself from the link given in the description as well and in the video. Now, if I'm changing the models from female to male, it will generate a male image. If I'm changing the ratio of male to female images, or if the ratio is same, so there are equal chances that it will generate the image of a male and a female. If the ratios are different, it the model will become biased, right? And that's the same reason if you ask Chad GPT gen to generate the image of a business person uh, sitting in the office, most probably it will generate the image of a male. This is why the model will become biased because as per the data it's given. So this is how it will generate. It's just a black box for now, but as we discuss in detail, dig deeper into it, we'll discuss in detail about it. So to summarize, this is what generative AI is. It has different level of modalities. And as we go ahead, we'll discuss about discuss in detail about all these components. The next lecture will be on different kind of image generators that we have, because here we have two kind of main components into it. One is LLMs, another is vision-based model. Vision-based models, has four main components into it. That is GAN, that is UNIT, autoregressor models and diffusion models. These are the models where we will dedicate one video to each model to discuss in detail components of it. So that is going to be the next couple of videos of that model as well. GAN, UNIT, diffusion, autoregressor as mentioned. And then we'll jump more onto the LLM side which has different kind of large language models. We'll discuss in detail about all these things as well. We'll also discuss about cross modality, how a model that is designed to do a text to text task, how can it generate text to video, text to images, and image to image summary, how we can do all these things. So that's something we'll discuss in the next video. If you have any question, make sure to share your thoughts in the session. Otherwise, that's it from my side. My name is Ashish and I'll see you in some other video. Thank you so much. Shukriya. Bye-bye.